A comprehensive review by Mann and colleagues published in American Psychologist in April 2007 concludes that one of the most important conditions for weight gain in later years and persistent form of weight problem is previous dieting. This seems almost inconsistent with basic logic. The research basically concludes that dieting causes weight gain. This does not make too much sense, or does it? In the review, Mann and colleagues found that weight loss programs consistently report a loss of 5 to 10 percent of body weight over the short term, but significant weight regain in the follow-up period. Overall, they report that 33 to 67 percent of subjects regained more weight than lost. In one study that had a two-year or more follow-up period, 83 percent of patients experienced a weight regain that was greater than the weight lost. More disconcerting was the notion that even in four to five year follow-up periods, there was no sense that the rate of weight regain leveled off. They conclude that exercise was the most significant predictor of weight loss maintenance. Second, non-randomized prospective studies have also found that diets were ineffective in managing long-term weight loss. In fact, seven prospective studies concluded that dieting was strongly associated with future weight gain. They report on one study by Kirkela and colleagues published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 1999 that showed in a cohort of 7,729 Finnish adult twins that a history of dieting was linked to future mean weight gain of 22 pounds and this after correcting for age, BMI, and several other confounders including energy expenditure at baseline. Another study, important for its sample size of 19,000 healthy older men, for monitoring many aspects of a lifestyle, and for its four-year follow-up period after dieting, concluded that one of the strongest predictors of future weight gain was having lost weight on a diet. This predictor remained significant even after controlling for baseline weight and height, physical activity, TV viewing, and eating habits. A large prospective cohort study followed 14,972 obese or overweight adolescents over a four-year period and found that the group of teenagers who engaged in dieting practices and lost weight ended gaining more weight than the overweight and obese non-dieters, schematically represented by the graph in this picture. Although dieters did indeed lose weight most over time, they experienced more weight gain than non-dieters. Most important, however, is that fact that the weight gain could not be correlated to increased caloric or fat intake. The argument that the practice of following calorie restricted diets is a predictor of weight gain rather than weight loss is further supported by a study by Stice and colleagues. They showed that among adolescent girls followed over a four-year period who engaged in dieting or who had a prior history of weight control efforts that their risk of obesity was three times greater than the non-dieters. The conclusions are paradoxical and fly in the face of current therapeutic practices since dieting is indeed the most prominent therapy used to fight obesity. Yet as early as the 1950s, it was clear that the solution to obesity could not be limited to self-regulation of food intake. Mayer points out that the hard environment in which mankind has developed has made men physically active, resourceful creatures, well prepared to be hunters, fishermen, or agriculturalists. Our appetite was never designed as a food-regulating mechanism for persons who spend most of their lives seated on a chair.